Hello, uh, welcome to our videos for 2022. We're back again. This is just a short video to start the year off because this year I'm reintroducing the frameworks. Uh, if you've seen my earlier videos, you may have seen the framework version two. We got as far as from version 2.04 and then I abandoned. I basically haven't done anything further on the framework since 2020. Framework version two started to fall over itself. Basically, I tried to maintain compatibility from one version to the next, but the framework was always intended to grow as I released new videos and found new things I wanted to do. It was not a planned commercial type framework. It was just something that was growing organically. And by maintaining that compatibility, it became more and more complex and difficult to use. So I've abandoned that and I've started on framework three this year. I've started from the beginning again. So this will also grow organically. But this time I'm not going to worry about maintaining compatibility with older versions. So when I release version 3.1, it may or may not be compatible with version three. I won't be trying to maintain compatibility and I won't even be testing for it. What I have here today is version 3.0. This doesn't really do anything. It's just to show you the structure of the framework. And then I'll be building on this with the very first video that I do showing an expert advisor, which is coming next week. The concept has also changed a little. So if you remember framework version two, I had an approach where there was an expert class and then you would simply plug components into that by creating objects of type indicator and of type signal and so on. So I basically extracted the strategy from the expert. For framework version three, I'm taking a different approach and I'm actually saying that the expert itself is your strategy. And it's going to be a little bit more flexible because of that, but it will mean that we have more than one expert class appearing. So as I said, you can download framework version two, it's fully working. Uh, and there are some examples of expert advisors that use that framework. You'll also be able to download framework version three and any future versions of this framework that come along through the year, they'll all be on GitHub for you. And there is a link again in the description for that. But as I said today, I'm just introducing how this framework will fit together and to show the basic structure that I have so let's get started. The first file in the framework is this framework.mqh. I've placed that under Orchard Frameworks. And this is here because it gives you a single place that from your expert, you can simply say include framework.mqh or include Orchard Frameworks framework.mqh. And it will take care of finding the most recent version of the framework and loading that in for you. So this is the default starting point. Use this if you're prepared to always get the single most recent version. If you want to make sure that you are compatible, and as I said, I'm not going to be retaining compatibility from one version to the next, then you should start at the next layer. And we'll see that in a moment. But if your expert simply says include Orchard Frameworks framework.mqh, this will pull in everything from the framework. And all you have to do then is use it in your expert advisor. And I have that file open here. It begins with this, if not defined framework version. So if this is the first file you've called, and you haven't specified a version, then this will define the framework version as 3.00 at the moment, and this will be updated as new versions are released. Once that's done, it will then check to see if there is a definition of a variable called framework version underscore three underscore zero zero. Now I have to do this because the compiler can't read the values of these defines. Although I can define framework version as 3.00, in the compiler directives, I can't test to see that value. So the best I can do is to create a specific define that includes that version number. So if I don't already have something defined with that version number, then I'm going to define it. So by the time I get through this block of defines, I have said there is a defined framework version. So it won't go back through this block again if I happen to reload something. And I also have this defined, which tells me which version of the framework that I'm using. Then we come down to these statements. I've only got the one version so far. So this if def framework version three, and then I just load in framework three framework.mqh and that is inside this folder here. Obviously, as I add new versions, I'll add more of these sections to load in whatever is the current framework. But like I said, this is the default starting point if you don't have a specific framework number that you want to use. If you do have a specific version, then you can go straight in to somewhere like this. And you would specify this as include Orchard Frameworks framework underscore 3.00 framework.mqh. And that will bring this version in for you. So now I'm in the framework3.mqh file. 
and this is also very simple. All this does is include other files that are needed by the framework. So there's the common base, trade and expert base. And so we'll step through these, but you can see that I've separated them each into their own folder. And that way, as I have specific versions of these files, I can also put them in these folders and it just keeps things neat. Now, this is the common base file. It's here in framework three, common, common base. And I've copied this directly from framework 2.04. So if you want to go back and see what's in this file, see the earlier videos because I don't want to take too much time describing it here. The only change I've made so far in this file is this include object.mqh and now the common base inherits from public C object. C object or the object.mqh file is included with both MetaTrader 4 and 5. So I can happily do this and it will compile in both versions. And that just gives me flexibility to use more of the classes that are delivered with MetaTrader. And then I've also added this defines.mqh file. It's in the same location, common defines.mqh. This file is what I'm going to be using to maintain a level of compatibility between MetaTrader 4 and 5. And at the moment, I've only used it for MetaTrader 4 by including this defines underscore MQL4. So I have an if def double underscore MQL4 double underscore. And that means that if I'm compiling this with MQL4, it will execute this statement and include the defines MQL4 file. As I find a need for it, if I have some MQL5 specific defines, I will add another defines underscore MQL5 file here. Let's have a look at that defines MQL4 file. And this is simply defining things that exist in MQL5 that did not exist in MQL4. So position types didn't exist, for example, in MetaTrader 4. They've been introduced in MetaTrader 5. So for compatibility, I've created this enum and entered the two position types here. I also have some return codes. Now, there are a lot more return codes. Uh, this is the only one I've needed so far, but I will define more as I need them. This is very much a, a do it as needed type structure. There's also the MQL trade request and MQL trade result. These are defined internally in MetaTrader 5, but they don't exist at all in MetaTrader 4. So I've put the structures for these here. And that way, by simply including this defines.mqh file, I will bring in anything that's specific to MQL4 that doesn't exist in 5 and so on. And that takes care of the common base. And if you want to see how this was built and the logic behind this code, then go back and see the earlier videos because I don't want to spend too much time going over old ground here. After common base, there is trade.mqh. Now MetaTrader 5 includes a file called trade.mqh. And if we open this, you'll see that I've used this same if def MQL4 and if def MQL5 to bring in specific files for MQL4 and MQL5. Let's just start with the MQL5. So this is the trade underscore MQL5. And if I have a look at that in the navigator, you'll see here in the trade folder, I have trade and trade MQL5 and trade MQL4. So MQL5 includes a trade.mqh file, and here it is. I'm including trade slash trade.mqh, and that brings in that standard trade class that's built with MetaTrader 5. But then there are a couple of things I want to add to that. They don't exist. There is no function like that in MetaTrader 5. So I've created a class that I'm calling ctrade custom, and that inherits from ctrade. Ctrade is defined here in trade.mqh. This ctrade custom so far has only two functions in it, position close by type and position count by type, because they're not already in this trade class. And I find these two to be quite useful functions. And they do, as they say, position close by type, I can ask the class or the object of this class to close all of the positions given the specific type. So passing in the symbol and the position type, then it will close all of the positions for that symbol and type. Position count by type is similar, but here I pass in the symbol and an array, and it will populate this array where one element of the array is the count of position type by, and the other element is the position type cell. And these are the functions here. Now these are in the MQL5 because the code is different for MetaTrader 4 and 5. The difference is being in MetaTrader 5 to loop through positions, I use positions total, and in MetaTrader 4, I use orders total, and so on. MetaTrader 4 doesn't have positions, it has orders. 
and the position count by type, the reason I'm returning both the buy and sell count at the same time, it's no extra work to do that because I have to loop through all the positions and I might as well just count both of them at the same time rather than force you to make two calls in case you want both the buy and the sell counts. If we go back to trade.mqh and now look at trade underscore mql4, this is a little bit more comprehensive because MetaTrader 4 doesn't include a trade.mqh already. There is no built-in ctrade. So I'm defining a class ctrade for MetaTrader 4, inheriting from object. So I've included the object.mqh here, and I've also included that defines file. So I've got access to some of those definitions for things that exist in MetaTrader 5 and don't exist in MetaTrader 4. But this also is not a complete copy of Ctrade from MetaTrader 5. I'm only building as much as I need, so I've only put in the basics here so far. So it has a number of functions, request the magic number, set the expert magic number, buy price, sell price, buy, sell, position close and position open. And these are the same functions that you'll find in the trade.mqh file in MetaTrader 5. But of course the MetaTrader 5 file has more functions and I'll add those as I need them going through the year. So these functions are simply emulating what MetaTrader 5 does. And then I get down to Ctrade Custom. I have this for MetaTrader 4 as well. And I've put the same two functions here. I'm trying to be consistent. I could easily have put these into the Ctrade class for MetaTrader 4 because I've got access to that. But I feel it's better to make sure that these classes are the same. So the Ctrade Custom has these two functions. And they do the same thing, but the code is different because in MetaTrader 4, orders don't just include what MetaTrader 5 calls positions, which are the buy and the sell. In MetaTrader 4, the orders include the limit and the stop orders. So I have to filter through those, which means that these functions are a little different in MetaTrader 4. So that takes me through the trade.mqh file, and then I'm including position info.mqh. Now, MetaTrader 5, the trade file, let me go back here. This trade.mqh file already includes position.mqh from MetaTrader 5, so the trade slash position.mqh file. What I'm including here is another custom version, positioninfo.mqh, which is this file. Let me open that and have a look at it. Very similar structure here. If we're defining MQL4, then positioninfo underscore MQL4 and for MQL5, position info underscore MQL5. And this is all about being able to use the framework with compatibility between MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. If I go into the MetaTrader 5 document, you can see I've included trade slash position info dot MQH. Now, I know if I've already included trade dot MQH, then this has already been included. But when you use this framework, you of course have the option to simply pull in one file from the framework. You don't have to pull in the entire framework. So I need to make sure that this file includes everything this file needs, just in case you haven't brought in the higher level trade file. So class C position info custom, I'm going straight into custom here. And that inherits from C position info, which is the file defined here. And then I've added one function in position info custom that doesn't exist in C position info, and that's this total function. The reason for that, MetaTrader 5 has a count called positions total. MetaTrader 4 does not. MetaTrader 4 has orders total, but they give different results. Like I said, MetaTrader 4 orders include the limit and the stop orders. Positions total for MetaTrader 5 only includes buy and sell. So I've included this function called total, and you'll see that I've also put that in the position info underscore mql4.mqh. That way I can call this total function from MetaTrader 4 or 5 and get a similar answer. It will be the total of the buy and sell. And I've put that into position info custom because I'm not going to modify the file that's released by MetaTrader. Uh, there are two reasons for that. I don't think I should be modifying someone else's file. But secondly, when new versions are released by MetaQuotes, it will simply overwrite anything that I might change in that file. So I'm not going to touch anything inside the classes that are released with MetaTrader. Let me go back to position info, and if I go into position MQL4, 
I've done the same thing here that I did with Ctrade for MetaTrader 4. I've included a number of functions that I need so far. This is certainly not all the functions that are in the position info class of MetaTrader 5. These are the ones that I'm using so far or that I expect to use in the very near future. And if I find I need something else from here that doesn't already exist, I'll just add them in here. I'm not going to build more than I need. But the same concept, I have C position info, which in MetaTrader 4 fills in the gaps for a lot of these things that already exist in position info in MetaTrader 5. And then I've included C position info custom, where I'm adding my special function here, total. And in this case, it just returns orders total. I will be modifying this when I need to because this really should loop through the orders and count just the buy and the sell. But at the moment, it's just returning orders total. And that's the position info.mqh. Then all the way back to framework. And the last file here that I'm including is expert base. Now expert base, again, including defines, and common base. Expert base inherits from C common base, but I don't have anything here yet. This is the one that will be built out most as we go forward. I intend that the expert class will have an on init, on d init, on tick, and various other functions here that can be called then from your application, but I'm going to be putting all of the logic for an expert advisor into an expert class. Not this expert class, this is the base class in the framework. And as you'll see, when I write the first expert advisor, I will have an expert class inside that expert advisor. And that expert class will inherit from this C expert base. And that will include all of the logic that I need. But in the expert base class, I'm going to start putting functions and features that are going to be common to a large number of experts. And there will be more than one expert base. I will, over time, I expect to have expert bases for different categories of expert advisor. So that when you write a specific expert advisor, you can bring in the base class for that type of expert and then just write overloading code to make that work. And that's all I really have to describe today. This was an introduction, the beginning video for the year. Next week, I'm actually releasing my first video showing a grid trading expert advisor. Uh, I haven't done grid trading in any of these videos so far, uh, but I have had some requests for it. And there will be more of those grid trading expert advisors through this year. And I'm actually concentrating more this year on expert advisors rather than small coding tips. So I hope you found this useful. If you have, click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe. And then if you click the bell icon, you'll actually be notified when we release new videos. And if you want to download this code, see the description. It has information there on where you can find this on GitHub. Until next time, thank you for watching.